In the first How to Train Your Dragon film, we are introduced to our protagonist, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, as a scrawny, brainy, insecure, pubescent teenage boy. Yet, in the sequel, we are met with a confident, intelligent, and mature, albeit stubborn, young adult as our main character. Somehow also Hiccup Haddock. I have heard it said, though not often, that this transition was awkward, and the transformation unrealistic and confusing. Is that true? Not in the slightest. In fact, it's just the opposite, and here's why. Hey y'all, I'm the Geek Apprentice, and it has certainly been quite some time since I last discussed my favorite series, how to Train Your Dragon, and boy did it feel good to write about it again. And before anyone asks, no, I am not watching the new series and probably never will, so moving on. As aforementioned, it's really only a handful of people I've heard say that they didn't like the transformation of Hiccup from film one to film two. These tend to be the same people who don't like Astrid. Well, that speaks volumes. Now, of course, if you don't like it, you don't like it, I'm not here to change your mind, it's the internet. But for those who, like me, never took issue with the transformation, or rather felt the complete opposite, but could never put their finger on as to why, I want to offer some counterpoints to what the naysayers have to offer, and, for my part, offer a different perspective that either is new or grounds the one you already have. And the points can be broken down into two easy categories, physical appearance, and a personality, and we will begin with the former. When going straight from the first to the second film, the appearance of Hiccup has some obvious yet also subtle changes. He's taller, his hair isn't so flat, he seems bulkier, has stubble, and just seems stronger. Well, first of all, it has been five years, y'all. 15 years old? to 20 years old. Look at a photo from when you were 15 and compare it to when you were 20 and tell me you don't look at least a little bit better. Case in point. The thing is, 15 is a super awkward age. Puberty and hormones wreak havoc on you. So Hiccup finally being in his early adult years, yeah, he grew into himself a little bit better, and that's story aside. And it's not as if he has completely changed. For example, his voice, thanks to the perfectly casted Jay Baruchel, is still its weird-sounding, nasally self, just used with more confidence. But we'll get to that later. His hair is clearly from his intense amount of time flying, helmet or not. Bulkier? Not actually. We can see through all that gadgetry and armor that he's still his skinny self, but more strategic. What really has set his appearance apart as better is the fact that it is a projection of what has grown up on the inside. Just like with physical appearance, five years is quite a jump, especially age 15 to 20. My personality didn't change once I was 20, but rather it was more set in stone than when I was 15. I was more assured of myself. Same with Hiccup. One of the issues I've encountered is people are only looking at the beginning of the first film, rather than looking at Hiccup at the end when he's grown a little bit and had his protagonist transformation. By the end of the first film, Hiccup is already, personality-wise, far closer to the Hiccup we know throughout most of the second film. I say most because obviously he grows in that one too. Going into story elements, he's no longer ostracized or belittled. He's a hero. He has stood up for himself and his values, which in the end saves his people in more ways than one. Their eyes are opened to the strength Hiccup's personality and innovation has to offer. He was already stubborn and intelligent, but now those traits can blossom for better or for worse in the following film. With him leading the way for a new era of Burke by welcoming dragons, Hiccup was now set loose to invent as he pleased. He found his true passions and for five years has been capitalizing on them. And with the newfound respect and appreciation of everyone around him, that's a surefire confidence boost. Confidence and self-assurance go a long way in terms of physical appearance, not literally speaking, but in how we perceive it. From the moment Hiccup removes his helmet in the second film, we see the passion and confidence that has manifested within him. As such, what's projected is more appealing and less awkward to watch. 
yet he is still his lovable awkward self. He may be far more comfortable around Astrid, but he still could never take her in a fight. He does not want to be chief and is very uncomfortable with the idea of becoming so. And besides, now that he's been looked to as the ultimate innovator and hero for five years, he's actually too sure of himself and his values. Not that his values are wrong, just how he goes about explaining them and exposing them to other people. This is featured in the second film as both his strength and ultimate hubris and downfall. In the end, these stark changes come down to two factors. The first is the obvious change of going from age 15 to age 20. Though he still retains his skinny frame and weird voice, his stubbornness, values, and appropriate awkwardness, He's gained the features both physically and internally that one typically would when going from early teens to young adult. And the second is the impact confidence will have on someone, particularly in the case of Hiccup and his story. Yes, he's not constantly as worried about what other people think. But we are throwing on the added impact of being a total outcast and glaring eyes from being the chief's disappointment of a son on top of the tumultuous time of being an awkward teen, to that shift to assurance in young adulthood years, especially since he's now seen as a hero, smart, and a favorite of his people. That's a leap if I ever saw one. So naturally, in context of Hiccup's story and the dramatic changes he has externally as well as internally, yeah, it does seem like a big change. But honestly, he's just stronger and more confident. So was the change in transformation strong? Yes. Does it make sense? Also yes. Is it empowering? Very much so yes. And honestly, like I said, the hiccup we see at the end of the first film is already very similar to the hiccup at the start of the second, just with five more years of glowing up to do. Thank you all so much for watching this short video. I do have other How to Train Your Dragon scripts in the works, but we have yet to see when those will actually come to fruition. Be sure to comment down below your thoughts on the transformation of Hiccup throughout the entire trilogy. I'm curious to hear. If you enjoyed the video, consider joining the geekdom by subscribing. I do have content outside of How to Train Your Dragon, obviously, because I rarely talk about it. And I also do live streams on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as of recording this video, I'm just just about to start Twilight Princess HD since I recently finished Skyward Sword HD. It's a fun time with lots of singing, accents, and weird conversations, so we'd love to have more people join. Taking it a step further, I do have merch now. Link down below. Mugs, shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, stickers, cups. It's still kind of weird, but kind of cool too. And speaking of support, thank you so much to everyone who supports in a particular way in the geekdom. Those who are channel members, as well as those who support over on Patreon, especially those in the Hylian tier, like Joking Batman, Code and Data, Trevor, McTopular, and Low Rulian Sheep, who has rejoined the geekdom and is also my newest channel member, too. So, thank you all so, so much. But anyway, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye.